friend Pete Van Rieren. He would have loved the way Santana's pitching, by the way. And you know what else, Joe? Pete Van Rieren loved. He loved ball players that appreciated the game and played the game the right way. And I can't think of anybody that personified that more than the man on the phone with us, and that's Braves hero Mark Lemke, the Lemmer. Hi, Mark. Hey, hello, Chip. Hello, Joe. Great to Hi, have Mark. Great. Thanks for joining us yeah. on uh, uh, not so good circumstances, but very happy that you could join us tonight. Yeah, tough day for Braves country, and certainly thoughts and prayers go out to Pete's family, his wife Elaine, and children, the grandchildren. I know it's a huge part of Pete's life. Well, you got to work with Pete quite a bit in the broadcast booth, pregame, postgame. You obviously played in the early days of the Braves' great championship run. What do you remember most about Pete? Well, I'll tell you, when I, I first met Pete, uh, I was probably in the late 80s, and you guys remember those days. It wasn't going <laughs> very well for the Braves. <laughs> spoken, spoken from experience, yeah. Yeah, sure. So it was, uh, it was a transition period, but I, I just remember uh, – Pete always being, you know, quiet and reserved, uh, just always professional, and uh, you didn't know if he was going to say a whole lot. But, boy, all you had to do was ask him a question, and it was just uh, like an encyclopedia full of knowledge, no matter what sport you talk about. And I had a little relationship with Pete, being that I'm from upstate New York, and Pete's from upstate New York, and we had a lot of things to talk about, and I just loved some of the experience. I loved it, him telling stories of his minor league days, players used to run into and working at radio stations and just the grinding because it kind of reminded me of what I had to go through to get the big leagues the grinding he had to do to make it and you know you think of Pete as being the great baseball announcer but heck he did all the time. He did and he did have to work his tail off to get there you're right Lemmer and when uh, Ted Turner hired him and Turner Broadcaster hired, Broadcasting hired him. He was at Tidewater with the Mets in, in AAA, and he had worked hard just to get to that level. Yeah, he was telling me about some of the long days, and I, I asked him, I said, well, what was he doing the offseason? He'd tell me, work. He goes, <laughs> I do hockey, basketball, whatever the sport was. And, and, of course, his first love was baseball. But, you know, we, we went back to talking a lot of upstate New York, and I, when I think about Pete, I think about – a lot of stuff I got to know about him off the field and the relationship we developed, obviously during my playing days, but then again afterwards. And the card games on the charter flight, Pete would come back and jump in our card games, and we just had a blast. He used to take a lot of your money, I hear, too, Lemmer. <laughs> exactly. I, I, you know, when he'd walk away, we'd say, hey, get your own meal money. <laughs> 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 but he was one of the guys. I mean, look, we, we know our place as broadcasters. We're not players. We're not in uniform. Um, but one thing that always characterized the Braves organization, Mark, was how welcoming the players were to broadcast guys and gals like us. We, it really was a family-type atmosphere, but I think more so Pete than anybody else because of all the attributes we've talked about all night long uh, and the memories we've shared about Pete. I mean, he, he, he was welcome in, in just about any uh, gathering. Uh, of executives, of players, managers, coaches, broadcasters, you name it, he, he fit in. Well, and, and that's why I mentioned that card game, because you know there is a little bit of that uh, that line that, you know, maybe right. you don't cross if you're not the players, you don't go back in it, but it was never the case with Pete. And, and I think during the, the, the early years of the 90s, people talked about the success of the Atlanta Braves, and they talked the great chemistry amongst the players in the clubhouse, but I think I think that was started by the broadcast crew. When you think about Ernie, uh, your, your dad, Skip, and Pete, and those guys, I mean, that was a family right there. You talk about great chemistry. I, I think those guys set the standard. Wow, that's really something. What a compliment to the to the three guys. And, and you know, of course, and Joe, when you came in and Don came in, it, it's almost like new guys who came to Atlanta Braves would say, what an easy transition this is to make. Yeah, they made it easy for us, Mark. And I was just saying that to Don a minute ago, that it's, uh, I was embraced with open arms and knew that if I needed to know anything about how the Atlanta Braves operated, how uh, whether it was travel or the team or minor leagues or anything else, I knew to go to Pete, and he would fill me in. 
tell you, it's amazing because, like, Pete wasn't one of those guys to really sit there and brag about himself and tell you all the things he accomplished. He had to, he had to ask him some questions, and it was amazing. You know, I never knew, you know, he, he was traveling secretary. And he did all the other things that he did besides broadcasting, and he handled so many responsibilities. You know, fortunately, when you play, you don't get to hear him call the games, but the great thing about TBS is everybody around the country was, you know, able to listen to all the games, and, and it just drew, like, you look in the stands in, in San Diego and so many Atlanta Braves fans out there. Sure, absolutely. And, you know, it, it, I think I've always thought about this, that the Superstation brought the games to the fans all over the United States and the world, but if they didn't like the broadcasters, they weren't going to listen. Now, they may not even be Atlanta Braves fans, but if there was something about the broadcasters that irritated them, irritated them, they're not going to listen. But they love Pete, and they love Skip, and they love Ernie, and they became loyal fans of the Atlanta team because of them. And I think the broadcasters were so knowledgeable. They taught people the game. They taught them about the players and entertained them. And uh, you know, Pete just had that soothing voice that you could just sit there and listen to all night long. Right. Yeah, you, I said earlier tonight, Mark, he's our, limbs, our Vin Scully. Um, yes, sir. Uh, because of the way our fans loved him and admired him. We all loved him and loved listen, listening to him. He was soothing. And, and I was happy to see that he got to enjoy some years. He mentioned the tough schedule quite a bit, you know, and we all know that every one of us that's been in the game, what a grind it is, travel, especially during those early years, and, and Pete had more of those years than I did of, you know, the Atlanta Braves being on the West Coast, or in the Western Division. Right. And uh, he got to do what he loved to do, and that was amazing, because when you looked at a guy like Pete, you thought baseball was all there was to him from the outside, but then you realize this guy had a whole lot more, loved his family, his grandchildren. Yeah, he used to say all the time, uh, you think it's fun covering baseball, just wait till you have grandchildren. And he, every time you talk about his three grandchildren, his face would light up. I mean, he loved being a grandfather, loved being a dad. I think for all of us who work in this business, we miss out on half of our kids' lives because of our job. It takes us away from home. Much of that burden falls on the wife at home. But a second chance with grandchildren came for Pete Van Weeren and he loved them to death. In fact, you know, a lot of folks didn't get to know Pete beyond the broadcast part. We're going to show you a picture. Did you know that Pete Van Weeren was a rock and roll drummer? How about this? This was at Cornell. He was in a band. He was the drummer and they were called the Hustlers. <laughs> we're, well, showing the, we're showing the picture on TV now, Mark. Uh, I see it now, I, and you know, I didn't know that part about him. I did not know that was the name of the band. <laughs> the Hustlers, yeah. I mean, check him out, man. He looks yeah. he looks good back behind the kid, and that and that's Pete. I mean, he his nickname was the Professor, but in many ways, he was anything but professorial. As Upton makes a nice catch out in left field. I mean, he was all business in the booth, but right, Mark. You, you guys, we'd look over in the TV booth and wonder what all the commotion was when you were working on radio with Pete. You two were on the floor laughing. <laughs> no doubt about it. What a great sense of humor he has. Uh, kind of a quick wit, dry sense of humor, but just funny. And there wasn't a subject you could bring up that Pete didn't know anything about or wasn't familiar about. He just was a, just a guy that was so well-rounded. Yeah, I, I was. you took the words right out of my mouth. We've, we've been talking a lot about his knowledge of the game and how much work he put into it. But he could talk to you. He was well read. He could talk to you about any subject, whether, whether you're on the bus, whether you're on the plane, or just sitting around having coffee in the morning. Bring up a subject. Pete knew a little something about it. Yeah, he sure did. And, you know, it's, it's still a shock to me, I, you know, getting the news this morning and, you know, just thinking about all the great memories and times, and you know, I, I had the time, uh, Chip, when your dad passed away, to have to fill in and work with Pete in those, those days, and I know how tough it was on him. And it kind of feels the same way all over again, but yeah, it does. A, lot of, a lot of great memories, and he just, you know, during that time, it was 
him sharing those great stories of those guys having the, the time of their life they did working together. Well, that was a family, and, and in many ways it still is. It's different, but it's still a great family, and, and as I said before, he was, uh, let me put it this way, he was the good child. Dad, <laughs> Dad was the one that always got in trouble. <laughs> is that fair to say? Yeah. Uh, I, I think better you said it than me. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, well, I, either way, they I know they had a lot of fun together. And, uh, you know, I really enjoyed that time. And, and Pete said one time we were in Arizona after we got through San Francisco after that first uh, trip on the road trip. And he said, that, you know, it's time we have a good laugh. Well, Mark, thanks for sharing your memories of Pete. I can only imagine the production meeting in heaven tonight as we'll smile with the professor as we go to break before the fifth inning.